Uh, next up in this track, we have uh, Build Fast with Parallel Calabash by Rajdeep Verma. He's from ThoughtWorks. Rajdeep is a senior QA at ThoughtWorks with deep passion for test automation in agile environments. He has worked on a number of web and mobile apps across various domains for more than five years. Currently, he and his team are building a mobile app for one of the world's leading airline companies. And he's very passionate about music as well. Thank you. Uh, so before we start, uh, I have a quick question from you. How many of you are doing automation in your mobile projects? Okay, quite a few. Um, how much time does your uh, automation takes to run? More than one hour? More than two hours? More than three hours? Okay, we have it. How, how, how much time does it take? Six hours. Okay. Um, so, what have you guys tried out? Uh, like, it's definitely a problem, automation running for six hours, three hours, two hours. So, what are the solutions uh, have you thought about in your projects? Okay, uh, probably I'll talk about it uh, during my presentation. Um, anyone uh, has tried to reduce their build time using parallel? Okay. Multi threading? Okay. Parallelization. Cool. So, thank you guys. That gives me enough data to start. Um, so, welcome everyone. My name is Rajdeep Verma. I am doing testing from past five years, currently working with ThoughtWorks, and I am passionate about test automation and agile practices. I, I work in a number of web-based applications and recently I started working for uh, mob, with mobile testing and uh, started facing some challenges. Uh, one of them being uh, in mobile projects, uh, the, the, uh, in our team we face a lot of challenges with respect to writing lots and lots of unit tests uh, and that's why there was a huge reliance on automated UI tests and that was the only safety, safety, safety net which we had and our automation got bloated up and hence the problem. Our problem was long running automation and I'll also tell, tell, tell why it was a problem for us and uh, then I'll take some time to talk about uh, how we solved it for this problem using parallel execution of test by multi-processing. So we being agile, we believe in some practices and we follow continuous integration and continuous delivery. Uh, this is how a typical CI pipeline uh, of a project looks like. So uh, developers are developing something, they do a commit and push it into the uh, server and in your CI test get, uh, code gets compiled and you get tested and you then build your APK and you pass it through a stage of UI test. So this stage is where our uh, all automated tests are running. And uh, so every check-in should uh, pass through a regression cycle. And if it is green, like ev all tests are green, your application you can say it's tested okay and you can distribute the APK to um, to your, your users or testers or stakeholders, whoever, using things like uh, hockey app or uh, test flight. So the whole point of running a test on every check-in is that you get fast feedback. Um, so this is a typical CI pipeline and this is how our pipeline looks like. Um, so on top right hand side corner, uh, I'm not sure if it's visible, the text is visible, but it reads the tried automation there. and. Uh, this is where our entire test automation suite is for uh, UI automation. We are, by the way, we are using Calabash uh, for automating our UI tests. And uh, what you see on the left hand side are five Git repositories. We are running our all our UI tests on any of the check-in in any of the five Git repositories. Now, why five Git repositories? One is uh, holding the code base for Android. Another one has some shared code which gets used for building the Android application. One code base for a middleware 
which also needs to get tested along with your application for your, uh, your APK and the automation code base, code base itself. Right. It's a complex setup which we have and uh, these are some steps like we have 5 git repositories average 30 commits a day and we have approximately 100 automated UI tests and any check in in git repository in any of the 5 git repositories and uh, you have to get feedback whether my check in is proper, it did not break anything you have to wait for 1 hour. Um, so what happens with slow tests? So our, uh, you check in, it takes one hour and what generally happens is you do a git push, your UI test runs and you know these are slow tests you know they are going to take one hour, you go for a break and you come back after an hour and see oh, test failed, you made a mistake uh, you know there is something you can fix no worries, you apply the fix Again, test starts running, and you know these are slow tests. One more hour, you fail. This time they should pass. Okay, so patience is not always a virtue. So you made a change, and it takes two hours for you to realize whether things are the things which were earlier working are still working fine, and Imagine 30 commits, 30 commits a day, 30 commits into one are like 30 hours. We can run our automation suite overnight, but then when we come back and we say it, it failing like three, four tests have failed, it's very difficult to track which of the Git repositories caused these tests to break, who was the committer, and uh, again, patience is not virtue. It, it would have been better if we can get a quick feedback, right? So. Uh, it's a time of making a choice. Either we can have lots of automated tests for good coverage uh, across the breadth of entire product, or we can uh, choose to have to, to run a subset of tests like smoke test for faster automation running. But generally, what we observe is uh, smoke. We we put only three four test cases. We already have uh, smoke uh, pipeline running, but it's not not enough to provide feedback on entire product. So we wanted to run, uh, like we wanted to have uh, lots of, uh, I mean faster automation run with whatever UI test we have. And we want to choose both. And how? Using parallelization. So we were developing application for uh, Android, iOS and mobile web. And uh, I'll talk only about Android because I'm going to talk about how we parallelize the test on Android. Um, so for mobile web, we were using Cucumber, water web driver. And this uh, really good gem, uh, it's an open source tool, it's called Parallel Tests. Uh, this, this is used for parallelization of uh, your queues, uh, Cucumber. So Cucumber is a tool for uh, for writing your uh, test. It's a PDD tool which you, you can use for specifying your specifications. Um, for Android application we were using Calabash driver. Calabash is a, a UI automation tool which is equivalent of Selenium. It's a driver which you can use to drive um, mob mobile user interface. And for Calabash uh, we did not have uh, anything which we can use for parallelization. Uh, the way parallel test does it for web. So, uh, we thought of uh, some options what we can do. So the first one was having multiple parallel builds in CI. We tried it. So we tried splitting the builds based on the functionality. Uh, so for example, our application has uh, a seat web functionality related all, all uh, a stream working on uh, that particular thing will have a different uh, automation pipeline. And we started splitting the pipelines based on feature, but then still, uh, even if you have multiple builds in CI, they need multiple agents to run. So that means you need uh, extra hardware. Second choice was uh, some proprietary uh, cloud-based tools, but they charge hefty money. And uh, third and the easiest possible way, which I could think, of, uh, which I could think of, was creating a tool that matches our need, that suits our need. And uh, we were using this parallel test gem, and I was thinking of creating something similar for 
mobile and that's how uh, uh, I created this tool called Pedal Canna Bash. Um, I'll give a quick demo uh, what uh, exactly it means. So uh, for this demo purpose, I have created a, a sample application and it's nothing but a basic calculator which can add two numbers. So let's say if you, have, you enter 3 and 4 and you, sorry, 3 and 4 and you press plus, it gives you the result 7. So I have uh, I have created, auto created an automation suite uh, around this, uh, some scenarios. Uh, in cucumber. So as you can see, is it visible at the back? Okay. Um, yeah, so this is an example scenario. Uh, so let's say given I set first operand as 333 and I set sec second operand as 333. When I press plus, then I should get result as 666. Very simple. So, I have created a suite around such scenarios and I total ha uh, I have total 8 feature files like uh, what you see in the left finger. So, there are total 8 feature files uh, which test my calculator application that it can add 5 digits, it can add 6 digits just for demo purpose. And in all these 8 feature files, I total have 12 scenarios. So some feature file have two scenarios, some feature file have one scenario. Okay. So let me run my test on a single device. So here is my device. And uh, those who know how to run test on Calabash Android. Uh, it's not visible. Okay. So uh, with Calabash, you we get this uh, this executable called Calabash Android, and we can say Calabash Android run and our APK file, and we can specify the features. And uh, I want to show you uh, how much CPU utilization is also happening alongside, so that we can measure how much processor is being used. So when I run this. You can see uh, it's installing the application and test have started exec uh, executing. Uh, they are now getting executed serially. And uh, these 12 scenarios in all take approximately 15, 50 seconds. And uh, uh, if you see the usage of the CPU, uh, just just have a look there and uh, we'll see how, how much time stream to be achieved with this. Slow test, boring. Okay, so it took fifty seconds overall. Here you can see the final summary. Now, uh, what I wanted was, I have a machine, it has multiple, uh, multi, multi core CPU, um, I can utilize it better, right? And uh, so I can connect multiple devices on it, and why can't I uh, do parallel runs? So out of the box, it's not supported by Calabash Android Executor, and that's, what, that's why I thought, thought of creating a new tool. Um, so there is this, uh, so you need to install this gem parallel Calabash. You just need to do gem install parallel Calabash. And I already have this gem installed actually, so it will not do anything extra. 
But then after you install this, you get another exec uh, uh, executable called Parallel Calabash. And then um, this has some switches using which you can specify which application you want to run. So hyphen A for specifying the application. Uh, my application name is calculator.apk. Okay. And uh, then I need to specify which features I need to run. So I have a features folder with me. Another thing is, uh, I need to, uh, I want to distribute this, these scenario based, uh, uh, my test based on the scenarios. So there is this uh, switch called hyphen hyphen group by scenarios. I, I'll talk more about this, what this group by scenarios does. But uh, uh, one more thing which we need to do is uh, start or connect, keep connecting more devices so that we can run test on them. Uh, for uh, saving time, I already have some six devices connected. Uh, right now, these are uh, uh, sim simulators. Uh, you can actually connect physical devices also. And when I run it, it says six devices found. And uh, it will start running all the tests, uh, like 12 scenarios, it will distribute equally among all 6 simulators here. So, um, it was quick, right? All, all got executed. So, it took 18 seconds. So, we saved time, like earlier it was uh, taking 50 seconds and now it's taking 18 seconds. A huge time save, right? And if you look at the CPU usage, uh, this part which is the in, in starting when you saw it was uh, so this part was with serial run and this is with uh, parallel run so if you see the time taken was longer but utilization was less but here if you see time taken is less but the utilization is increased okay uh, also I want to show you after running the test you see, uh, I, I, I get, get six different repo reports from all six devices. So you can uh, you can know uh, which test ran on which device. So you see here in the reports folder here, uh, automation report device one, device two, device three, device four, and so on. Now let's get back to the theory. So that's uh, now how it works. So uh, so I first detect how many feature files are there in my feature folder, um, and then I detect how many devices are connected to my computer. And let's say I have four devices connected. I divide, I group all features into four groups. So eight feature files I group in equal groups. Like one, two, we go in one first group. So third and fourth feature will go in, go on, go in second group and so on. So I have my feature groups ready with me. So these are my feature groups. Once I have feature groups ready, uh, there is a process spawner module uh, which spawns different process and the equal number of process as uh, that of my groups. So if I have four groups, I start four processes and each process will get its own execution environment. So for example, uh, the first process will get ADP device R equal to the argument of the first device and so on. And that's how my process knows which device I need to talk to. I also set one more environment variable for each, pro uh, uh, each process called test process number. Um, this is useful when you want to do some process specific action. So one problem uh, uh, I saw people facing was uh, if, if you have uh, Four, uh, you are running your test on four devices, but uh, you you can log in only with uh, four different credentials. Like one dip, one single credential, login credential will not work on all devices because your application does not support it, your API does not support it, right? So you need to make sure that each process user logs in with a different login credentials. 
So you need a way to tell, hey, are you process one? If yes, then use this credential. Hey, are you process two? If so, use different credential. Now, how will you know if you are process one? And that's why you need to have this, uh, uh, I, uh, uh, I had to introduce in my mind manual, test process number. So you can query from your test, if test process number equal to one, use these login credentials. If test process number equal to three, use different login credentials. So uh, once all processes are ready, each group is uh, uh, passed to each uh, process and process gets executed. And after everything gets executed, uh, I summarize the result and I show it on the standard output. That's my terminal. Uh, reporting I already showed you. Uh, if you have three devices connected, you will get three different reports so that you can know which test ran on which device. Uh, so one, th uh, one issue uh, in the initial version of this was uh, distribution was not optimal. If we distribute scenarios based on feature files, it was uh, not the equal distribution. right? So let's say if I have first feature file as one scenario and the second feature file has uh, nine scenarios um, and I have two devices, two devices connected, that time what will happen is first, first process will finish up very quickly because it ran only one test and second one will keep running for longer. So the ideal way would have been uh, distribute uh, uh, distribute the test based on the scenarios, right? Um, so the solution which uh, I could think of was uh, so Cucumber gives you this uh, dry run formatter. So using a dry run, you can uh, create a report of how many scenarios are going to get executed in the run. It takes a second, a flash of second, and can tell you how many. It can generate a report of all the scenarios which are going to get executed. And based on that JSON report, we can parse different individual scenarios, and then can we can group the uh, instead of grouping the grouping by feature files, we can group by scenarios, and that's what this uh, switch hyphen hyphen group by scenarios does. So some advantages of fast uh, fast test, we get quick feedback. Uh, faster test means faster development cycle for BDD kind of environment. Um, it also means we can utilize our hardware to maximum level. And last but not least, it makes us happy. And what did we achieve? Our speed, of course. Scalability. So let's say you have more, more and more tests in future. And you want to do f uh, further parallel. All you need to do is just keep connecting more and more devices. It will automatically detect because it automatically detects how many devices are connected. Based on that, it will does uh, it will do the distribution and the reporting and process specific actions. So, as I said, if the logins are going to be different, we can use uh, this environment. So, a word of caution here. We are all happy our tests are running faster. We reduce our time from one hour to just 20 minutes. And even, even less of with multiple, like 15 minutes only. And we are really happy. But we all love automation so much that we keep automating every damn thing. And uh, how, how much parallelization? Like, I, I, like I've like heard people having thousands of UI, UI tests, right? Even if you do parallelization, they are really difficult to maintain. They, are, they, they become flaky and uh, it's a nightmare to maintain all of them. It's really difficult to analyze the reports, see the failing tests, and analyze how many of them are genuine failures, how many are failures because of flakiness. It takes a lot of effort, right? Uh, we had to choose one option, lots of automated tests for good coverage or faster automation. And we chose both of them. And the solution was parallelization. But can there be any other solution or any other any other thing which we probably be we, we missed? Yeah, there's one one thing. So this is a, a test pyramid. Uh, it's a concept well explained by Martin Fowler. Uh, what it says is uh, you should have uh, so as you go from bottom to up, um, your uh, at the lower level it, it has unit test, middle level uh, integration API and component level test, and then top of the pyramid we have UI test. UI test takes a lot of time to execute. They are a maintenance nightmare. 
they are very cost implement whereas unit tests are uh, get gets executed very fast and they are uh, not flaky and as we go from top to bottom of the pyramid the time of execution decreases so why there is a value in uh, a good value in ui tests there are some of the ui tests uh, which can be pushed to the lower levels you can reduce number of ui tests but still you can do automation but at the right layer at the unit test layer so whenever you are thinking of writing any uh, any ui test just think again if it makes sense to have a unit test for it and can you just uh, move uh, go away from uh, automating it at the higher levels um so that's all i had uh, this this is the uh, github link for parallel calabash uh, this is a open source uh, tool you can go have a look you can contribute towards it uh, or if you have any issues you can raise it over there you can download it from ruby gems also so this is essentially a concept uh, uh, an approach basically how you can parallelize so this uh, because i was using calabash i did it for calabash but it can be used uh, can be done for any other tool which you guys are using uh these are some good references used and i'm sure you guys have lots of questions thank you okay questions here are Uh, from the demo, what we saw now is uh, talking about distributing the scenarios and the features, right? Okay. So this does not give me uh, the device coverage. So which means uh, the way you told, uh, I have uh, eight features, and uh, it distributes the number of scenarios to it. Right? So what if I have to run all my eight parallelly on all eight devices, like eight features, right? I want all the eight to run on one device. So yeah, that's so a support for us. Yeah, so there is this guy from uh, Ireland who actually added support for this. He said he had sent me a pull request. It's already merged into the code base now, so that support is there. Cool. And the second one is uh, about the rerun type, right? So how do we handle it over here? As you see, uh, it runs on multiple threads, the way you told. So and if it has to rewrite to a particular rerun file, so definitely it's going to overwrite there. It's going to. Right. Right. uh there is one more pull request which is pending for merge for the same feature thank you as you know and android also sorry android windows no android yeah so these were the simulators but you can connect my android devices this is supported for android only so all these uh, uh, emulators were were actually android emulators Uh, I could not connect six physical devices, so that's why I used emulators. Do you? Do you have any limitation on the number of devices? No, not really. If the limitation only is your how much your CPU can support, it shouldn't get hot. Sorry. Can we run on wireless? Can we run on the wireless? Wireless. Wireless. Ah, uh, no, no. Thank you. Yeah, it's like uh, you are running in locally, like a new system. So six devices. When you are going to the CI, and then server parts. How we are handling that device? So, so basically in server part, like when you are launching the emulator, it's uh, taking too much time. So in our CI server, our all emulators, all devices are already launched and connected, always. So think of this machine as a CI agent, okay. and that's that's the setup we have. So we already have our agent with multiple emulators or devices connected. So emulators are only Jenny Motion or Android. It can be any. So you can use uh, Jenny Motion emulator or Android native simulators, or you can connect devices. It's your choice. Uh, you can even have the combination of all. Like either you you can have three emulators, three devices connected. It will uh, it will auto. So basically, all of them are six uh, places where you can run your automation. Okay. You it will automate. Uh, uh support that also so one thing so last question is like uh, if i want to run specific scenario in a specific device uh one specific scenario on one specific so you have list of feature files right like you have yes, yes. Uh, so i want to run some five uh, feature file in a one specific device 
Is there any option I can pick the device? Right now, no. But you can add for uh, you can send me a pull request. Okay. Thank you. Two different devices with two different OSs. OS versions. Of Android OS versions? Yeah. yeah, one one probably in Lollipop and one in KitKat, right? Yeah, yeah it will. So uh, one question which Sai asked was uh, uh, on the same line. If you have one KitKat device, one uh, Lollipop device, and you have 10 tests, you want to make sure that all those tests support on all versions of Android, you can uh, do that sort of parallelization. So instead of distribution of the test, you can uh, run all tests on all devices also. There's an option for that. Uh, in terms of feature grouping, right? So, say, let's take I have five features and I have, uh, say, limited, say, like three devices. So, how does it actually distribute at that point of time? The kind of permutation stuff it picks up? Yeah, with the feature distribution, let's say if you have five features with three devices, and out of those five features, let's say the text which you are specifying uh, is not in any of the, uh, any of the one, one of the feature files. Let's say you are specifying that I want to at the rate uh, x y z tag. I have the tag on all the five features. Okay, at that time it will just uh, let's say five five features, three devices. So it will uh, keep distributing one one one, and then again one one one. So let's say five and three devices. So first feature will go to first, second will go to second, third one will go to third, and then fourth will again go to first device, fifth will go to the second device. So it's like it's filling three arrays sequentially. Yeah, currently it's in Calaver support only, like the gem. So is there any feature like in APM also it support like you're building any kind of tool for APM? Uh, I haven't used APM actually, uh, but uh, I think APM has inbuilt support for, I might be wrong, uh, but I somewhere read on their uh, site that it support uh, you can do parallel test execution using APM, but if it is not supported, you can basically do same thing which I did for them. It's it's uh, a concept basically, uh, uh, an, uh, an approach of parallelization, multiple CPU. Uh, you have to spawn multiple processes. I'm, I, I'm, I've uh, written this in Ruby, okay. so you can write anything like this in any of the preferred languages. So I just spawn multiple processes or operating system for level processes. And assign the groups to teachers. Okay, thank you. So you have the grids, the hub to and the works. So you don't have to have another extra bit of code to be to work with that. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay, uh, thanks people. Uh, I think uh, Radhir would be more than happy to answer your questions offline as well. Uh, please provide him the feedback. Uh, thank you, Rajdeep. Thank you, guys. So, please accept this.